So let's change our government to autocracy. This is going to allow us to get two uh, military policies as well as a wildcard policy. So here we go. Time to choose autocracy. And uh, we're going to get capital receives plus one bonus to all yields. So uh, it will be useful to have for having kind of a more powerful capital if you choose to go down autocracy. Uh, again, that wildcard slot means that you might potentially be able to get up three uh, military policies, which is something that I think I do. I think I choose to do. I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, I might not actually have the policies to make that relevant. I might not have enough, like, important... Yeah, I don't. I don't. It's really nothing that I, I see. I don't know if I go to for maritime industries. Oh, naval units. Ancient. Yeah, I don't need that. So, yeah, the, right now the military policies I have aren't useful it's for that wildcard slot. So I'm looking at something else, I believe. Yeah, plus production in all cities. That'll help me pump out a few more units. So I figured most of the most of these policies will help us in our in our war efforts against England. Since England decided to, to backstab me. Well, they didn't really backstab me, but uh, they did sneak attack me, and I think they did a pretty good job of it. And I that was cool. They used my own infrastructure against me too, so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I like I like that. I don't know why I think, oh yeah, I'm having some problems with the range attack. Oh, okay, I wasn't trying to build, I was. I thought I was trying to attack the warrior, but I, that's right, I need to get my scout back before he runs away. So I have no ancient walls, which means that my cities are not bombarding. I also don't have the correct building in my encampment. I believe you might need a barracks to be able to start to fire from the encampment. And I'm not trying to send out my... I'm not trying to send out my, my builder right now while we're being invaded like this. Uh, I, I wanted to send a trader to New Orleans. That way we just have the infrastructure. Oh, uh, I don't think I, I'm going to be able to get that encampment because because Japan is right there. Right there. So you'll notice that I tried to build you know a variety of units. You know I didn't want to just build one uh, one thing because you don't you, you want to explore obviously with uh, certain things. So I, I tried to build like you know the chariot, uh, the chariot, the battering ram, siege tower, spearmen, archers, warriors, just to get a, a, an overall vibe of how it all feels. I'm the only thing you know the biggest hope, and I wish I would have asked this. The only thing I really hope for is that spearmen have a way better upgrade path. Path that is like, and it's such a small deal, but that's one of the worst things I hate about Civ Five. Is that spearmen are powerful in the beginning because they can stop horses and they're stronger than swordsmen, spearmen and pikemen, I should say. But then they upgrade to lancers, and then they are absolutely useless, unless of course, again, you're defending. If you're defending and you have a wide empire and you need to go around killing barbarians or whatever, then they're okay. They're okay. But outside of that, oh, I hate lancers with a passion, with a passion. And then it doesn't even make sense, right? Because don't the lancers turn into? Uh, is it, it's not Gatling guns, but uh, they turn into something weird. Oh, they do turn into tanks, which is kind of cool. Tanks are kind of cool, but anyways. That was a random rant. I'm just really hoping the Spearmen have a better upgrade path, and I, I wasn't able to confirm uh, what that would be this time around, but I'd imagine, I'd imagine that they have a pretty big upgrade there, because that was like one of the biggest things people complained about, is after Pikemen, Spearmen, or Lancers sucked, and... Uh, yeah, that was something that a lot of people agreed agreed upon. Okay, so we're going to fortify and heal a little bit because we finally, I think we've got a grasp over this war at least. We've defended our empire enough. There are still three um, English warriors. And I'm going to get back my settler right now too. Notice the combat strength ahead too. We've got London with 22, Leeds 27. So I, I guess that Leeds probably had a wall built at the very least at this point. Population, I don't believe, has much of an impact on combat strength at all. New Orleans is at 15 strength, though. Obviously, settling on certain terrain will help, though. So, bam, there's my settler. So, I gained my settler back. Again, I don't think that is going to be a... I don't think that's going to stay. I, I, he probably should have turned into a worker. Or builder, I guess I should say. I think I finally settled my, my first coastal city here. Because I realized that attacking Leeds could could be useful for a boat. A, a boat, a navy, would help us attack the coast of the English Empire. 
Okay, so, um, I have no idea how battering rams work. And you're gonna realize that as we continue to push forward in this campaign. Siege weapons have totally, totally changed. Siege weapons now don't directly attack anything. That's the battering ram and the siege tower. What they do is they give a pretty big bonus to the... So, first of all, siege units... Imagine siege units pretty much as a civilian unit now. Imagine them actually as a great general that specializes in taking cities. So they give big bonuses to the surrounding melee units. Um, I don't know how I feel about this change. I, I don't know yet. It was just something that I accepted, and looking back at that... Oh, the mountains look so cool drawn. Um, looking back at that now, I don't know. You'll, you'll see me use the siege weapons. You'll see me use multiple siege weapons. You'll actually see me, see me use siege weapons really wrong in the very beginning. So uh, that, will be, that will be fun. But um, we'll see how that works out. Again, they, they're pretty much acting as great generals now. Because, and again, it kind of works hand in hand with the stacking system, which, as I said in the very beginning, doesn't really change a whole lot. And I'm glad it doesn't, because the reason why I could never go back to Civ 4 after Civ 5 was I just loved unstacking units. Hated stacks of doom from Civ 4. Hated them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was a good game, but just the stacking of units ruined it for me. Anyways, so we've got three English warriors inside of my empire right now. Taking us down. And... I'm feeling pretty confident at the moment. Um, I, I'll actually skip ahead here in the video. Just a little bit. I'll actually go to about there. Okay, so yeah. Obviously I was going to deal with those guys. So I have myself a battering ram. I have myself a chariot archer. Heavy chariot archer, I believe. And I find a bar uh, an encampment. I was so upset about that because I sent my settler out there alone because I assumed there's not there's nothing gonna be over here. I can't be that unlucky. Of course I was wrong. Now luckily Laventa saved my booty all day this day at this event. Laventa helped me destroy so many barbarians. I loved it. It was a really cool city state. I didn't like the bonuses they were giving me. The faith was whatever. Although I should have realized the faith was really useful. I didn't realize I could have bought great people with those faith with the faith points. Cause I kept thinking, where's my great profit? I'm doing okay faith wise. We even without a shrine. Well, I don't think I built a shrine. I might have. Uh, let's see, what is this? Six plus defense. Yeah, I didn't really care about the defense. 100% production towards defensive buildings. I didn't need that anymore. That that would have been useful, like about 10 turns ago. This defensive tactics. I still went after it because. It was the only military policies that I, I had noticed I could acquire. Kind of trying to see if England has anything else. Wanted to make sure England had nothing else here. And we're going to take down our, our final English warrior who's hiding in this oasis, actually. <clears throat> and need, need, needless to say, zone of control is still, still a thing and still important. Zone of control, where uh, if you're too close to an enemy, you won't be able to move. You know, that's going to eat up your movement if you try to, like, walk around them or whatever. That's why I, I was saying Leventa saved us. Because they just, you know, zone of control thing. That Spearman Spear probably wouldn't have left his encampment anyways, though. I will say that. So, yeah, right now I'm like, oh, New Orleans was a very bad spot. But in the future, I figure out, well, New Orleans is good for building wonders. Lots of open spots. This is why I'm about to, yeah, so I'm about to buy a, buy a tile because I need a farm. New Orleans is not growing very fast. 18 turns until it gets to 5 population. That sucks. Yeah, so that, that's, that's not good. Or, and I, I don't think I have access to lumber mills just yet either, which is the other issue why I won't build on the forests. But uh, yeah, I could definitely use something with the gems. There's no way for me to get around this this situation without bringing up more units. You can notice also in the corner there, the Japanese scout that's embarking, and he's about to fight. Actually, I don't know what happens to him. The Japanese AI is going to be able to move before that barbarian AI, AI, so I'm wondering what will happen. 
So I forget for a while that I can't move through. Oh, oh, now I, now I remember. Okay, there, there you go. I was gonna say uh, for a second there, I do forget that I I can move through terrain. Until you you can get a technology and you can or you if you want you can close your borders. You don't have to though. So England in the beginning decided to close their borders. Japan right now won't. They 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 won't close their borders down. So now I build a siege tower. Actually, I think I purchased one, right? Oh. Do I purchase a secondary battering ram? Yeah, so we are we're coming in for the next attack, for the next invasion with these siege units. Oh, Japan does move away. Oh, do they uh, do they land? They don't. Let's see what these barbarians do up here in the corner. Okay, so Laventa again, saving my butts, and they should range attack. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we already knew that the barbarian boats are ranged now. We don't know how far of range they have. I wouldn't be surprised if they can only attack one tile away. Because I didn't notice any boats attacking two times away. Again, I didn't play much of the naval game because I started off in this Pangea map. And actually, uh, both times I played Civ 6, I wasn't really able to explore the naval game too much. So that's going to be unfamiliar territory for me a little bit. And here we go. Here our journey begins. Now, roads provide different bonuses per era. Uh, another thing I want to mention is that there was no pop-ups to show me what era I was in. And uh, that was kind of a difficult thing to deal with because I didn't know what era I was in. And in the tech tree and in the civic tree, there is no display. So that's uh, that's something that I really hope changes because there, I, think it, I think it is confirmed that those pop-ups were just put in. But, um, yeah, right now there's no way for, of me of, of knowing what era I'm in. But, point is, infrastructure grants different abilities just like it used to um, per, per era. So, I think right now, geez, what is it right now? Th we're not actually given movement bonuses for the road because it's too early. It's too early still. Um, we get something else, though. It's very small, but something else. But by the end of the game, by, like, the last era, like, the infrastructure... Or like the railroads, like they don't eat and eat any movement up, because the maps are bigger. I'm assuming that that's probably why infrastructure is going to be a much bigger deal, because the maps are 20 to 30 percent bigger. I think roads and uh, and railroads, obviously, going to have a lot more importance. So we've seen uh, Kyoto, Osaka, uh, Osaka. I'm sorry, Japan has four cities. So they're off to a pretty fast start, and they've got a lot of crabs out there to the south. Japan, you should have helped us, man. You could have helped us. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is I don't believe there are war themes just yet. Because there was no war theme. And that has nothing to do with Fraxis. This, uh, by the way, this composer is not... Okay, so the composer that, that, uh, that did the Civ Four soundtrack... He's back, but he's only back for the main theme, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure, so like the title music and uh, things like that. Uh, these, these more kind of ambient, uh, ambient pieces, they're not by the Civ 4 composer, so just something to keep that in mind, because that was something I was kind of interested in. You know, Civ is beloved for its music, so I did want to make a, a mention of that. So, uh, another thing I want to mention, <laughs> mentioning so many things, I know. The tooltips stopped working for the combat, and that really sucked. <laughs> that really, really sucked, because I was so curious to know, and you know what, maybe maybe they did that on purpose, because they didn't want to give values that were going to be changed anyways, but um, that really sucked, because I was really interested to see the percentages, the bonuses, the exact values that we were getting due to combat. I was really curious to see that, but so I was, you know, a little bit disappointed to not be able to actually see the values there and why everyone is, you know, hitting this hard or not hitting that hard. And I'm, I'm assuming that has to do with balance changes. I, if I had to guess, they did that on purpose so that, you know, no one got the wrong idea. You know, what units could attack certain things stronger than before. So yeah, the Siege Tower looks pretty cool. Again, I, I guess it's safe to assume that Assyria will probably, uh, 
Well, it's, it's a Siri could still be in the game. I'm just thinking Civ Five here. Their 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 siege tower, probably, if they are in the game, they're not gonna have their siege tower, or maybe it'll just be a unique Syrian, a Syrian siege tower. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, obviously siege tower, very big unit in uh, Civ Five Brave New World. Ancient walls. That's how I could have bombarded, and I won't build them now, but I do eventually build them. Uh, encampment trading, training. I mean. That's pretty much just like research focus or gold focus, if I remember correctly. I found myself purchasing a lot more units than I've used to, than I'm used to. Uh, another another factor due to the uh, the unconsolidating of cities, you find yourself purchasing a lot of a lot of units, and you really want that. You really need your borders to grow a lot faster, because you run out of space so fast. So it's like it's kind of a struggle. Yeah, I'm I'm really sure that that barbarian can only attack one tile away, but I I don't know. It would just be an an EV. It'd be a more balanced decision for a ranged barbarian boat to to be able to get up that early in the game too. I think that's a pretty big deal. So we're gonna begin our siege of our first city in Civ Six. Looks like England's kind of for the most part run out of most of its units. Uh, I'm on the fence. I don't want to attack this this slinger unit because I know that that's going to put me in range of the city. And I figured they had walls since Leeds' combat strength has is more than London, and Leeds has less population too. So yeah, you can actually visually see the walls surrounding it. Um, and uh, so I'm going to get bombarded here. <laughs> I'm going to get bombarded. They also have a boat too. Um, actually, that's something that I'm curious about. Let me check what happens. What am I going to do with this warrior? I know I'm trying to bring him up to to help us out for reinforcements, even though I've got plenty of melee units. I've got plenty of units here. I've been able to buy it. Luckily, my economy was, was pretty good. Lots of snow. And I'm not sure, too sure about all this snow. I don't want I don't want all this snow to be honest <laughs> I'd rather it just seems like wasted area I know that there has to be snow a little bit of snow for the map for the map to work so the map to be realistic so there was the bombardment from the city itself that wasn't an archer that looks like it's gonna be the new the new animation I believe or the animation isn't in play that actually is probably more likely yeah and that boat didn't strike us Interesting. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna stop right there. So our siege of England is preparing just off the uh, off the border of Leeds. We'll see how this goes. I know how this goes, but you guys, you guys don't. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.